Hi, it's Amanda Creative Gardener. <laughs> Cole's behind me, he's waiting to come out. So I totally forgot that I hadn't done a garden tour for the end of January. So we're just going to go out and look around. I'm not going to do the whole garden. I'll probably do um, some of what I ended up not what I ended up doing but I'm going to do this side of the garden because the front is just like okay <laughs> the front is kind of more open and there's not much going on there but I'll show you more of the back and go into um, a little bit of detail in some of the plants anyway so and it's not going to be long anyway yeah um, so let's go come on then Okay, one of the things I did want to show you is the frangipani tree. It's come back now. So, um, what happened before it had, uh, I don't know, a few generations of the frangipani hornworm on it. Might be a bit windy here. And they eat off all the leaves. And we've got some more. So, you can usually tell that, well, I've, I've shown you the eggs actually. You can usually tell there's some. They've laid their eggs under here and they grow in and they eat out the leaf as they go and there was some damage um, when they'd eaten off all the leaves and then one of them decided to lay their eggs and there was nothing for them to eat so they started to gnaw at the, um, the branch itself I'm just trying to see if I can find where they I might have just cut them all off um, you where they did that and yeah so basically they just eat into um, the branch they don't normally do that which is just like you know so why did you guys decide to do it this time well I think I might have um, cut it off but you can see there's a few there's one two three four babies who um, seem scattered but they probably crawled there. Look, there's a couple there. Ah, right. Here we go. Look at that. So that was actually done by the hornworm who didn't have enough to eat. So they, and here you can see. Oops, sorry. There we go. You can see where they've. Um, gone into it so they don't normally but if they're there and there's no food then which is the leaves for them look we've got a few under here can I see, am I even pointing in the right direction there we go anyway so let's go in my hand I've got some um, Epsom salts and what I do is um, scatter these around some of the trees that seem to be kind of having issues it's usually the papaya because they're really suffering because of the slugs of the snails now I haven't been able to catch them in action um, but look what happens to the papaya this is one of my dwarf ones that they've kind of attacked and so I've got my iron phosphate slug pellet but what I also do every now and again is just I'll scatter it around here it might give this um, one a bit of a kick and you can see towards the top it's kind of trying to grow back grow back leaves but at night the sods come out and they've done all this they've eaten it all all the leaves and I had to rescue um, four of the small papayas they're not gonna ripen I don't think but um, they started eating into the papaya itself on the outside of the skin. So here are some more. We've got a male one just there behind and the, the one in front is a female. Um, we've just had the grass cut. It always feels like a fresh beginning. It's starting to grow quite high. Um, I'm going to give... This is my hammer in. I'm just going to give that... So I'll just scatter it round the edge but um yeah so this is the where most of the action takes place and um everything since last month um everything is still you know coming on nicely see that 
folded that. That's how he gets next door. Yep, it seems. So I had to kind of try and block it off. I will try. Here we've got another dwarf papaya, which I've probably shown you. If you look at my um, papaya video that came out with um, shown you, but they've actually got bigger. And I love the way they look. It's like a kind of a smooth look compared to these ones. Let me show you these ones. Oh, oh, they're ripening up now. See, can you see? I was telling my son to come and take that one down for me because that one looks like there's three that's going to be ripened. Um, you might not be able to see it. So this, this one, anyway, it's this one closest to us. It's going to be ripened. Once that's soft, the one on this side is ripening and this one here. So what I will do is just put them in a brown paper bag. So as we go around here, um, we've had a bit of rain. So some of the, especially the papayas, they were, they were looking a bit sad but um, we had quite a bit of rain, about half an hour's worth yesterday. Um, and some is better than none, because at least then, you know, they get a bit of water. Now that there is my banana. Petal, flower, look. So we're gonna have, it's gonna have uh, one, two, three, Four bunches on it I probably I think I might need to water it um, like when they're in this stage just give them more water and it's competing against this one here um, this small one here I can't move it I just have to wait until the fruits have formed generally the garden is good yeah it really is I just like Look at that down there, apart from the bucket down there. But I love the way that um, some of the rows and, yeah, some of the rows look. Here we have my pomegranate patch. And I've got some um, deep red pomegranates growing. My aloes, I separated them out because they looked like that one there. It's got lots of babies around it. And um, they just look a little bit forlorn, a little bit. But um, I didn't have time to do that one, so I've left it for now. Um, but yeah, all of these had little babies. And this one, I don't think I did this one. Nope, didn't. Yeah, so I think the guys missed a few bits. I've still got the black paper, the, um, the, it's not black paper. It is, um, comes in a roll. I think it's like six feet across and it comes in a long roll. And at the beginning I had put down these sheets because I wasn't able to grow food in each section. I focused on that section over there. Maybe we'll look at that and see how it goes, how it's going. Um, and then over time, I just, this area wasn't suitable for, you know, growing anything. It was more like a walkway. <laughs> Can you hear that sound? It's this. It's also known as the Shack Shack tree. Hundreds of seeds in those pods there and I've been searching to see what else they're useful for. But um, it doesn't appear that, you know, obviously you can't use, not obviously you can't use them as a food. Um, there is one seed that we normally use as, um, what is it like, for jewelry. But I found out that you can cook it, cook the seeds. Anyway, so. Yeah, so I left it here and, you know, things have grown up around it and I just have, like, my Moringa trees, I've got cassava over there. It's just literally in the paths, but um, I've just left it because, as I say, I'm not really necessarily growing anything in it. I did 
move. Was it this one? No. Did I put it in a bag. Oh yeah, this one. I need to get rid of that one. Because when I picked it up, there was like 50 slugs under there. And what they've been doing is coming up this neem tree and eating the leaves. So, but I managed to get rid of them. And they just went back into the soil to provide nourishment for the plants around. Um, yeah, so this was the first section that I had done. Which way should we go? We'll go let's just go around this way. And I've just been kind of tidying up and making room for some of the other plants. Coral was behind me. Um, mango here. Got three mangoes in this vicinity. Got this one here, which is growing. I put it there just by chance and thought, you know, let me just see. And there's one here. Got quite a few <laughs> fruit trees. Um, there's a neem tree here growing. And I usually uh, cut back all of this hedge so that it can get bushier at the bottom as it's growing. Um, what have we got here? Some papaya, uh, some moringa. Yeah, I just love the garden. And um, I'm trying to get a particular feel. So this is another male papaya and you recognize the males because they have a profusion of flowers and you know, especially on these stems like that. And I've got some other papayas here that I'm not yet sure what whether they're male or female. Um, I just plant them. When we get the fruit, I just um, put them in the ground. This is a carambola, five-fingered fruit tree. It's coming on well. I had two of them, but one died off. And I'm not sure why the leaves are growing, going yellow. Um, I'll have to look that up. And this is my Suriname cherry. I'm just putting some of the Epsom salts around here. Oh, the other thing that really does well when I add some Epsom salts is my rosemary bush. It's getting a bit crowded out by the scavola. But um, I come out every morning to just check on the plants. And that's the time where I... I go around to have a look and that's where you can catch like like things like this like this is this is um, cassava but something's eating the leaves and I found some squash bugs around so oops, spiders web there so I'm not sure whether it's them they're kind of red I think they're the red variety. Um, I've only seen them before when I had uh, when I was growing pumpkin, and it was just like an infestation. Um, yeah, there's. Uh, I think it's probably the water, because this particular one, this spiky one, it looks a bit droopy. So we need a bit more water. But I think we're going into the um, uh, dry season. Okay, look, oh, you can see a banana over there. It was one that I managed to dig up and um, I thought it might have had issues, but it seems to be holding on. Let's see if we can get past here. Yeah, seems to be holding on. It has spots on it, so I'm not sure whether it's one of those that doesn't grow uh, fruit. Um, then we've got the red Mexican sunflower. Now, look where it is there. I'd planted them there and the seeds have just self-seeded. So I've just allowed it because it's like more flowers. Anyway, let me put some of this here. I'm just gonna put a little bit here. So everywhere's kind of come on and I'm just 
seeing what space is here and what else I can grow. It's about making, maximizing the space. I'd love to, this is a different variety from the one that I showed you that was ripening. Um, I'd love to see one of these ripen, or see these ripen so I could taste these. Um, and let's go around here. These are all coming up. I'm. This is where I've put my, um, yeah, everything's drooping on this side. This is where I've put my tires and I've put plants in them. Some of them have got aloes, some have papaya growing in them, two or three, um, and I've just allowed them to grow. But what I wanted to do along this bit was to create a hedge. So I've used this plant and I've planted several along here. And these two seem to be growing really well. They were all planted at the same time, so they're all taking their time. And once they got to the size that I want them to, I'm going to move this and just clear this up so that you just got the hedge and then you've got the um, tires with other plants. I haven't planted anything in these yet. I've just got a. I've just been filling them up with the sticks and leaves and they're kind of breaking down so we'll have some nice soil in there um <laughs> uh, well i think i probably did i show you this before my the wood it broke it broke from my compost bin so what i'll i need to fix it that's what i need to do okay so as i said it was going to be just a quick a quick thing Try to transplant this. You know, funny enough, where I, where we used to live, I took a cutting and put it here, and this is the result. But when I took a cutting from this and planted it elsewhere in the in the garden, it died. So maybe I have to put it in a sheltered spot first before. Um, but it's like you know what's happening. It's growing so big. Um, that I thought it would want to grow in other places. I've got a variegated one and that's doing okay. Um, and this, this is guinep or aki, um, as they call it here in Barbados. So it does grow into a big tree and you'll be able to see the tree over there. That's the big tree. That's the Bajan Aki tree. So um, I'm going to use similar principles as they do with uh, bonsai, <laughs> I think, um, and just keep them small. So we've got one here. I think what, what has happened, and we've got one here, is that because we're on a slope, so when it rains, it's a river here, it's, it's full up of water and um, the water comes from our neighbours. So maybe, I think what had happened is somebody had eaten the fruit and dropped the seeds and the seeds just came in here and started growing. And then I picked out the seeds. I mean, I had planted some others and they grew quite well. So I picked out the seeds, all the plants, and then just planted them around the garden. So we've got that, that one growing really well. Um, this one and there's one here Oops. I'm trying to be careful of the spiders got this one so what I'm just gonna have to do is just keep it at a manageable height and just allow it to bush out and just keep clipping it and we'll see how that goes oh look at my Sugar cane. Oh, looking for a treat here. Oh, where is it now? There it is. Oh, <laughs> it's gone. I tried to film some um, fireflies at night, but <laughs> it was so dark. This is doing well. I've had to just cut off some of the, the ends here because it, you can't then walk down the path. But um, 
Yeah, so we're getting back to... Um, well, not we're getting back. Everything is kind of new because it's never been at this particular point. Come here. Come here. Come here. Oh. Come here. Um, yeah, it's never been at this point where everything is lush and growing and, um, at, at, you know, at this, everything's at this particular point in their, in their growth. Um, and I think I'm more um, in tune with what's in the garden, what's growing and everything. And uh, let's go and sit down. Let's go and sit down and have a little chat. It's my chair. <laughs> it's a three-legged chair with a branch at the end. But it's my chair. And I survey the land as I sit here. Okay, let's have a little chat. Hi there. So, yeah, this is a space and everything is kind of... Um, you know, everything is is growing and looking great. And there's some new things. There's some new things that I'm uh, trying to grow, like the um, uh, pomegranates. Got them. I brought the fruit, which has been. It was imported from the states, so it's like it was massive and it was deep red. And so I planted about, it must have been about 100 seeds, and a lot of them have come up. So I'm looking forward to them growing. They grow quite quickly, so I just really need to um, keep an eye on them. But it's, it's like, it's, it's, it feels really nice to be in the garden. Um, so what I'm, what I'm hoping to do now is make my plans for the rest of the year in terms of what other things I want to grow, um, what other things that I want to create in the garden. Um, I want to do more eco dyeing using plants, looking at the medicinal properties of the plants that are here, and um, using fibre. So just there, that this particular one is is the one that just fruited so it needs to be okay. I guess he, he gets a good uh, back scratch there um, so it needs to come down because it's not going to fruit again but I thought let me just leave it there for a little bit um, careful um, let me just leave it there a little bit because it's, you know, it just adds its height and it's really nice. But um, obviously I have to make room for some of the babies that are growing underneath. But it's, yeah, thinking about what the plans are for um, 2021 and food production. And I've, I've got dreams of, you know, dreams yeah dreams and visions of what and goals of what i want to do in the garden and some of those are on my patreon so um you can go there and you can see a lot of the posts anyway um and if you want to sign up you can sign up uh, for one of the tiers but what essentially i want to do is grow enough food to create food boxes and be able to you know share what i'm growing um, I think it's important, especially in these times, for us to build our immune system and what better way of doing that with fresh fruit and vegetables um, that you can consume on a regular basis and I think, from, I think that's one of the reasons why, it is one of the reasons why we know if you've got a low immune system then you're susceptible to um, getting illnesses so if we did that a lot more people's immune system would be strengthened and they could fight off a lot of the diseases especially the you know what disease that's going around globally um virus um so that yeah you know you can get back to 
a different kind of normal because there is no there is no and I think I've said it before there is no getting back to normal the normal we thought has changed because we've now been used to a certain way of living so we are constantly we constantly need to learn to adapt and change but we need to be healthy um, to do that so um, there that's that's the garden for you know the tour I wanted to get that in before we're right into February because we'll get another one at the end of February and by then you'll be able to see the pomegranates and some of the other things growing in the garden anyway so you take care and I will see you soon